The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Strauss here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode and I have here with me Jeremy Boychin who is an agronomy research extension specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How's it going today? It's going great Kara. We're in a wheat field and we're talking wheat. Absolutely. So we are here today to talk about wheat streak mosaic. Now there have been reports across southern Alberta, a couple reports of uh, the seeing the disease pop up. Do you want to talk a bit about it? Yeah, so wheat streak mosaic virus is a virus that can be hosted in winter wheat, spring wheat, barley, durum, and corn. Predominantly, we see it in winter wheat. That's its, its strongest host. Um, there's also some weed, um, some grassy weeds that will also host wheat streak mosaic virus. And it's transferred through um, hosts like winter wheat or spring wheat or durum um, through a small insect called the wheat curl mite um, and it will move between crops uh, and infect crops so it'll take that virus and infect a new crop as it moves from one crop to the other um, and wheat streak mosaic virus can be pretty impactful on yield. Um, it can cause small effects, but if it's serious enough, it can cause pretty massive effects to yield and quality, causing shriveling of the grain. So when it comes to this disease, we're hearing a lot about the green bridge. Do you want to kind of talk about what that is? Yeah, so when we talk about a green bridge, um, we're not talking about an actual physical bridge. Um, we're talking about kind of a hypothetical bridge that diseases and insects can move from one crop to another or from one season to another. Um, and essentially what what we're talking about with a green bridge is um, a, a piece of green material like a weed or a crop that can host the disease um, and overlaps between crops. So if we put spring wheat in the ground and through the season that gets infected with wheat curl mite um, and then before that spring wheat crop is dried down, we seed a winter wheat crop and it emerges we're now in a situation where we've created a green bridge because the wheat curl mite can jump from your spring wheat into your winter wheat and that will carry that wheat streak mosaic virus into the following year as that winter wheat continues to grow. So that is what we're talking about in terms of a green bridge and this can also be grassy weeds. So it's not just a crop that can be a green bridge, um, uh, grassy weeds uh, which can be host to wheat streak mosaic virus um, or wheat curl mite can actually be that uh, green bridge. So when we want to talk about mitigating wheat streak mosaic virus, we want to reduce the opportunity for a green bridge to occur. Uh, and the best way to do that is to make sure that there is no green material in the field or uh, in surrounding fields where we know that there's infection. And when I talk about surrounding fields, um, typically it's, it's um, around the edges of the field we're talking about um, within a half mile or so uh, because wheat curl mite actually moves through the wind. So wind picks it up from one crop and moves it into the other. So we need to think about kind of surrounding fields when we're talking about reducing our green bridge. So we have our spring wheat. Um, it's getting to the end of the season. We're thinking about putting winter wheat um, one field over uh, and we know that there's a potential risk of wheat curl mite. We want to make sure that our spring wheat is harvested, dried down, there's no green material and no weeds in that field that can host wheat curl mite or wheat streak mosaic virus um, before we have emergence of that winter wheat we are seeding that fall. So if we think about these situations in terms of making management decisions, we want to make sure that again, all that green material is, is died off. Um, but we're also thinking about when we're actually seeding our winter wheat, because if we're targeting those very early seeding dates or earlier than recommended, there's an, uh, an increased opportunity for the wheat curl mite to use that green bridge uh, to transfer to your winter wheat crop. 
And then if that happens, we go through the winter, that, that winter wheat crop starts growing again in the spring, we seed our spring wheat crop, uh, and then we've created another green bridge there because if we seed another spring wheat crop or, or durum crop um, next door to that winter wheat, um, and the wind blows the wheat curl mite, we can transfer that over and then the cycle continues. Um, so our goal there is to eliminate the green material in that field that can carry that wheat curl mite and in surrounding fields within that, that mile, half mile radius um, to stop that transfer from happening. Okay, so say you're in, in an area that has seen wheat streak mosaic, you hear your neighbors maybe talking about it, you're going out to your field, you're going to scout for it, what are you, what are you looking for? What, what exactly does it look like and what part of the plant does it actually impact? Yeah, so you're going to see yellowing on the younger leaves, typically in the surrounding areas, um, and like the, the outside rounds of the field first, because that's where we're seeing those wheat curl mites blow in from. So walk around your field boundaries where maybe you know that you had winter wheat the previous year where there could have been a green bridge and you're checking on those some of those younger leaves, those newer leaves, you're seeing a little bit of yellowing that's going to happen at the tip of the leaf first and it's going to move down the leaf and it's 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 called mosaic because it has that kind of mosaic looking pattern where it's not a regular pattern as it as it goes down the leaf. Um, it's kind of irregular and it's it's interesting in that the um, the veins of the leaf stay green. Um, so you'll have this kind of greening striped pattern in, in the tip of the leaf um, and the yellowing mosaic that works around it and it'll continue to move its way down that leaf and then spread to other leaves from there. Uh, and then we start talking about losing photosynthetic leaf area and that's where we're losing yield. Um, so again, we wanna check surrounding areas of, of the outside of the field um, and we wanna be looking at those younger leaves first. Um, unfortunately, there is no control method at this point um, in, in terms of infield control methods. Um, so we're not gonna spray our way out of this. Our best management is to, again, eliminate that green bridge um, making sure that we're, you know, seeding our winter wheat based on appropriate timings and not too early and thinking about where we're seeding it, proper crop rotation. We're not doing wheat on wheat. We're not doing wheat followed by winter wheat and, and really, you know, pushing the boundaries of those rotations and green bridges. Um, and we're also selecting winter wheat varieties if we know we're at risk of wheat curl mite and wheat streak mosaic virus. We're picking varieties that are resistant to wheat curl mite. So radiant and elevate, elevate are the two varieties um, that are currently resistant to wheat curl mite. Um, so if you know you're at risk, uh, those are options to choose to help kind of break that cycle.